greetings welcome to yet another video on back titration remember of the three or four titrations that we have and that is direct titration redox titration indirect or what we call back titration and double titration of the four back titration usually draws a lot of interest maybe because of the four it seems to be the most confusing and the most complicated so we want to dedicate yet another video to tackle back titration once again so here today we are provided with solid a which is 0 0.5 grams of metal carbonate m2co3 it has always been our advice that uh, a student should have a summary of what is happening in the substances given so that you have a better understanding of what is happening in the titration experiment so this is our solid a we are giving a summary solution b we are also giving a summary of it as a 0.2 molar sulfuric 6 acid and then we have solution c this is sodium hydroxide but it is not known the concentration is not known as per the instructions in the paper so what is happening here is that we shall do two titrations one we will use sulfuric 6 acid to calculate concentration of sodium hydroxide the process is called standardization so in the first uh, titration we shall standardize sodium hydroxide solution using the 0.2 molar sulfuric acid then in the second titration we shall react excess sulfuric 6 acid with the metal carbonate part of the acid will react and then part of it that will remain unreacted we shall finally titrate with the standardized sodium hydroxide solution so welcome as we go through the question together at the end of the two titrations we will be required to calculate the relative formula mass of our carbonate and finally to determine the relative atomic mass of metal m so to procedure one we are told to fill a burette with solution b even if you do this it's always good to know what these solutions are so our solution b remains 0.2 molar sulfuric 6 acid then we are supposed to pipette 25 cubic centimeter of solution C and this was the sodium hydroxide of unknown concentration so we should transfer this into a conical flask add our indicator and then titrate against B from a burette we are supposed to repeat these two more times so that we are able to complete our table because this was an illustration of an experimental setup we are going to fill the table together so let's assume for the first titration we had an initial burette reading of 0.0, .0 cubic centimeters at the end we were able to get 15.5 so that gives us volume of solution b used as 15.5 cubic centimeters we then began at the same final reading for our titration 2 and we ended up getting a final reading of 31.2 doing subtraction we get volume of solution b used as 15.7 and then if we continued from where we stopped for titration 2 
we were able to end at uh, 47.1 as the final volume and this gives us 15.9 cubic centimeters. So students, I feel this table based on what we had agreed earlier that at any given time we should be able to have two volumes or two values that can be averaged. The first two and the last two so that you target to score all the marks on accuracy and also on final accuracy. There is a video we did on this and as usual we are going to share once again its link in the description of this video so, do, so that you can at least remind yourself of what we discussed. Now, after filling the table, determine the average volume of B used and we are going to use our first two values. That is 15.5 and 15.7. We shall average the two to give us an average volume of 15.6 cubic centimeters. So students, you also know that whatever we have done in this table together with this average volume, total marks are five. And once again, we are reminding you to watch that video where we explained how the five marks are arrived at. Moving on, calculate moles of sulfuric 6 acid that reacted. Now, if you look at our procedure, the solution B we used was 0 0.2 molar sulfuric acid. And the volume of it that we have used is 15.6. So to answer this question, we shall actually use our first principal approach, which we said is actually the easiest method to ever use in this topic. So, the 0 0.2 molar that were given, the volume was 1,000 cubic centimeter or 1 liter. Out of those, we only used a volume of 15.6 cubic centimeters. So how many moles should be there? This kind of argument is called first principle approach and it's always the best to use when you are answering questions on the topic, the mole. So if you did these, you should be able to get 0 0.00312 as the number of moles of sulfuric acid that were used in the first procedure. Next, we are being asked to calculate the concentration of solution C. Remember, solution C was sodium hydroxide and its concentration was not known. The only thing that we know about that substance is that we used a volume of 25. So to get its concentration, we shall rely on the equation of the reaction that takes place during titration. And in our previous titration experiment, we are actually reacting sulfuric 6 acid with our sodium hydroxide. And we are able to get sodium sulfate and some water because this is... A neutralization reaction. So to balance, we are forced to add a 2 to our sodium hydroxide and a 2 to water. So from here, we are able to get mole ratio of sulfuric acid to sodium hydroxide as 1 is to 2 as per our equation. So the moment we know moles of sulfuric acid, we can know moles of sodium hydroxide. So moles of sulfuric acid were 0 0.00312 as per our calculation in part B. So this one we simply we will simply multiply by 2 to get moles of sodium hydroxide because mole ratio is 1 is to 2. So this gives me 0 0.00624 but remember the question is asking us to get concentration, which means number of moles per liter. So these moles of sodium hydroxide, if you remember, they were only present in the volume used in the, uh, in the titration. So to get concentration, we shall finally argue out that if 25 cubic centimeter of sodium hydroxide 
are able to give us 0.00624 moles. What about one liter of solution? So that we answer our question. So cross multiplication gives 1000 times 0.00624. We divide by 25. And this gives us an answer of 0.2496 molar. Up to this point, we have standardized our sodium hydroxide solution to the sense that we have been able to get its concentration in number of moles per liter. The process is called standardization. So once we have standardized our sodium hydroxide, as we have just done, I explained earlier that we shall now use it to do another titration with our sulfuric 6 acid after it has reacted with solid M2CO3. And that is what brings out the meaning of back titration. So welcome to procedure 2 of our experiment. So in procedure 2, we are told that using a 100 milliliter measuring cylinder, measure 100 cubic centimeter of solution B. I want to again make sure that uh, I explain to you students that it's always good to know what we are dealing with at every instance. So solution B remains our 0.2 molar sulfuric acid. So we shall measure 100 cubic centimeters of it. We transfer into a clean conical flask. Then we are supposed to add the whole of solid A into it. Solid A, for our information, is the metal carbonate M2CO3. So we add it to solution B, shake to dissolve all solid until no more effervescence occurs. We shall level, label this as solution D. So in short, solution D is simply the excess of our acid after part of it has reacted with the carbonate. So this excess, we shall titrate with our standardized sodium hydroxide solution. And if we are able to get moles that will react during the titration, we shall then be able to know moles that were able to react with the carbonate. So we move on. We shall pipette 25 of solution C. What is C? C is what we have just standardized. So it is 0 0.2496 molar sodium hydroxide. So we shall pipette 25 of it, put into a conical flask, add two drops of phenolphthalein, and then we fill a burette with our resultant solution D. We shall titrate C against D from the burette. Then we repeat two more times to complete our table. So with that understanding of what goes on in procedure two, students is now very rare to miss the correct answer for the questions that would follow. This is because we have a clearer understanding of what is happening in our experiment. So in procedure two, we are reacting sodium hydroxide whose concentration now we know and excess sulfuric six acid. Now, to the table. And again, because this is an illustration, we shall be able to give the values that we can use to show how the calculations are done. So let's assume for our titration one, we started at zero, we ended at uh, 17.8, giving us a volume of 17.8. For the second titration, we started at where we stopped, and we ended at 35.8. If you do the subtraction, you get 18, and finally, we are able to top up the burette to give us a final volume of 18.2. So that is our volumes for the second procedure. Again, you can see we are designing our values 
to have two figures or two values that you can average. First question, calculate the average volume of solution D used. Now this table had some small error here. This is D, not B, D, but it has been typed as B. So volume now allow us to use again the first two. You don't have to show all the three because you will have done a mistake by including the two which are not within the allowable range of plus or minus 0 0.2. So you only have the option of averaging the first two or the last two. Now this gives us 17.9 cubic centimeters. And again, we have explained this is marked together with the table for a total of five marks. Okay, to the other questions, moles of solution D used. Now, this solution D is excess sulfuric 6 acid. And we know the average volume is 17.9. The rest of the information is not known. Remember, we were able to get D after we put in our carbonate to 100 cubic centimeter of 0 0.2 molar sulfuric acid. So part of it reacted with the carbonate and part of it we were able to use during the titration where we obtained this volume. So as far as this question is concerned, with only volume, you can't get the answer here. Until we do an equation of what happened during the titration. So during the titration, we were reacting sodium hydroxide with excess sulfuric 6 acid. So this was able to give us sodium sulfate and water once again. Now we balance with a 2 on the sodium hydroxide. Now we were asked moles of this that were used. But do we know moles of sodium hydroxide that were used? That is also not known, but we know we used 25 cubic centimeters of it. That is what we pipetted. And we also know its molarity. So we used 25 cubic centimeters of it. And after our calculation in procedure one, its molarity was found to be 0 0.2496 molar solution. So with these two pieces of information, it is easy to get moles of sodium hydroxide that were used. And this would be 25 times 0 0.2496 divided by 1000. And that should be able to give us 0 0.0, 0 0.00624 if my calculator serves me right. Those are moles of uh, sodium hydroxide used during the second procedure. So with this, and mole ratio 2 is to 1, we are then able to get moles of sulfuric acid. And this is quite easy. Moles of sulfuric acid used now, I will divide this by 2, because mole ratio is 2 is to 1. So 0 0.0062 over 2, and I get 0 0.0031. Two. This was 2, 4, eh? 2, 4, 2, 4. So I get 0 0.00312 as moles of sulfuric acid in D. Very easy if you understand what goes on in your second procedure. Now, moving on. Moles of sulfuric 6 acid in 100 of solution D. So, the volume used during titration was 17.9 cubic centimeter. Here we are asked in 100. So it becomes so easy. 17.9 cubic centimeter contained the moles in question. This one's here. So what about 100?
cubic centimeter that we are being asked which will contain how many moles so cross multiplication 100 times 0 0.00312 over 17.9 and my calculator solves me right I'm able to get 0 0.01743 moles ah, yeah. moles of sulfuric acid in a hundred of solution B. Solution B was 0 0.2 molar sulfuric acid. So the answer here, you don't need to think much. We have one liter containing 0 0.2 moles as indicated here. What about 100 cubic centimeter that we picked before we added in our carbonate? So this is 100 sorry, times 0 0.2 divided by 1000 and that gives me 0 0.02 moles now next question number of moles of solution b that reacted with the carbonate very very simple calculation so before we reacted our acid with the carbonate the moles present were 0 0.02 by the time we were doing our second titration, the moles used were only 0 0.01743. So to get moles that, were, that reacted with the carbonate, you subtract from what we had ori originally, you subtract from it the moles that reacted during our titration in the second procedure. This is what we started with before we reacted with the carbonate. This is what we ended with after reacting with the carbonate and now we were reacting it with sodium hydroxide during second titration. So the difference between the two gives you moles of acid that reacted with the carbonate and we get 0 0.00257 moles. The beauty of back titration it, is that it becomes so easy if you know moles of carbonate in 0 0.5 grams of carbonate this we can't tell until we do an equation for the reaction between the carbonate itself and our dilute sulfuric 6 acid so from the way we write the metal carbonate we can also know how to write its sulfate it will be like that and uh, we do plus carbon dioxide and allow me to break my equation because of space and put water down there. So this is, an, uh, uh, is a balanced equation. It's already balanced. So moles of acid to moles of carbonate, one is to one. And here we have moles of acid. So it implies that moles of carbonate were also the same as those of the acid. And I get 0 0.00257 as well for that part of the question. Next, we are being asked to calculate the relative formula mass of the carbonate. RFM is usually what is mass of one mole. So from the previous question, we were able to get uh, 0 0.00257 moles of carbonate were used. And this were equivalent to only 0 0.5 grams. So to get RFM, we will ask ourselves the mass that one mole would have. Doing cross multiplication, you have 1 times 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.00257. And that gives us close to 195. That is RFM, no units. Lastly, we are asked the RAM of m so we shall write the formula there we are and uh, this should give us rfm of 195 so m2 we will have 195 minus the mass of carbon which is 12 plus the mass of three oxygens which will be 48 this should give me 195 minus 60 and this should give me 135 but there are m2 so 1m for my metal will be 135 divided by 2 and that gives me 67.5 as the RAM of 
my metal in the carbonate M2CO3. Students, I believe this second video opens your eye even more widely to understand back titration. In the video, we first standardized sodium hydroxide and then we used it together with a carbonate to be able to determine the moles of sulfuric acid that reacted in those two instances. We continue to wish you all the best and thanks for being with us.